Greetings lords and ladies and welcome to the Westeros Vibe, where Show Dorn is Worst Dorn. Before we start, I would like to remind you that links to every article or video covered this week can be found in the video dis description below. Also in the description you will find timestamps so that you can choose which stories you will want to view. We start the week with Game of Thrones George R. R. Martin's thoughts on resurrection. The Westeros Patriarch gave his opinion on the moment people have been waiting for for so long. I do think that if you're bringing a character back, that the character has gone through death, that's a transformative experience. Even back in those days of Wonder Man and all that, I loved the fact that he died and although I liked the character in later years, I wasn't so thrilled when he came back because that sort of undid the power of it. He also takes on Gandalf's resurrection and explains the difference between that and his own. For more info, read the article, link down below. Moving on with... Game of Thrones just violated the last sacred rule of television. Carol for spoilers. From episode 2, Home. The rule the article is referring to is the death of infants, which was a taboo in TV. Of course, Game of Thrones being the groundbreaking juggernaut and shocking turtle that they are, they were probably always going to get to get there. For the full description and opinions on the scene, read the article. Link as always down below. Next up, Game of Thrones once again on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. Spores ahead for episode two. The cover features Kit Harrington along with the words "He's alive." commemorate the week in which Jon Snow rose from the dead to slay the Bastard of Bolton, presumably in episode 9 or the finale. In other news, the actors behind Roose and Ramsay Bolton discuss what happened at, Wh at Winterfell in Home. Michael M Mc L. Hutton, who played Roose, had this to say. Well, we kinda came to a decision when we were filming it that it really was a spur of the moment thing. And the information that is given is that it's a boy that had been born. Now if it had been a girl I may still have been alive because his position would not ha not be threatened. But in the moment that we find out that Walda has given birth to a boy, for me, Ramsay is no longer needed. And for him he knows that and he strikes quicker than I do. I don't think he's coming with a plan. It's much more interesting in view to view it in that way. It's just his psychotic nature that takes over. It's not patricide, joy or thrill that I'm head of House Bolton. It's a very conflicting relationship and it's sh a shock that he has done it. Because there is a love of his father despite the very messed up relationship. For Rion's statement, follow the link below and check out the full article. Moving on to... Unraveling the complex pack of lies behind Jon Snow's return. It is a lengthy article and I suggest you read it if you are interested in the many details surrounding the secret of Jon Snow's return. Next up, Patrick Malahide on Balon Greyjoy being the last of the five kings. In an interview for IGN, the River King discusses multiple aspects of the role, from the fact that he is the last surviving king of the five, his death in episode 2, and who would he like to be his successor. For more, read the article, link down below. In other news, there's more to that Hodor flashback on Game of Thrones. The reveal that Hodor wasn't always mono-worded was quite the shock to the system, leading to theories about how he became an oversized Pokemon. From trauma brought upon by Benjen Stark, to an encounter with White Walkers, people are running away with it. Moving on to... Karis Von Houten on the long, arduous task of watching Jon Snow. In this interview, she goes into what went into shooting that particular scene, and it is all summed up in this one quote. It took forever to resurrect him. Forever. It was such an important scene, we shot it from so many angles. I think I watched his body 50 times. There would be a lot of people who would be very jealous, including my mother and sister. I was joking about that with him, if only my mother could see this, and he loved that. Next up, Game of Thrones ratings down slightly for home, still great. The number is 7.29 million, only down by 650,000 from last week. 
These are still excellent numbers and they will presumably stay strong until this season ends. In other news, director Jeremy Podesva tells Ghost War Game theorists to wait and see. For those who are unaware of this theory, it states that after his death, John worked his direwolf in what is known as a second life for skin changers. Podesva said the following. Everybody was very concerned about retaining the mystery for the audience and giving people the opportunity to discover it for themselves, rather than having it leaked. I think that's ultimately what people want. As much as people were asking me and everybody else on the show constantly if Jon Snow is alive or dead, I think really, in their heart of hearts, they don't actually want to know. Moving on to... Gemma Whalen, Yara on the Kingsmoot and Pilu Azbek explains Euron's missing eye patch. In an interview, Gemma briefly explains the King's Moot as a type of election in which the one with the best renown and promises takes the captaincy of the Iron Islands. As for the missing eye patch, Pilu threw out a meaningless Twitter answer. I'm sorry, but with all the killing Euron has to do, he needs both eyes. What kind of an answer is that, I ask you? Next up, Kit Harrington reveals Jon Snow's post-resurrection state of mind. The bastard's words were, and I quote, At first I was worried that he'll wake up and he's the same, back to normal. Then there's no point in, in that death, he needs to change. There's a brilliant line where, when Melisandre says, What did you see? And he says, nothing, there was nothing at all. That cuts right to our deepest fear that there's nothing after death. And that's the most important line in the whole season for me. John's never been afraid of death, and that's made him a strong and honorable person. He realizes something about his life now. He has to live it because that's all there is. He's been over the line and there's nothing there. And that changes him. It literally puts the fear of God into him. In other news. SNL brilliantly spoofs Game of Thrones' big reveal. Watch the video, laugh, cringe, whatever you like. Link down below. And finally, Game of Thrones star reveals the massive mission ahead for Bran Stark. Spoiler warning ahead. In an interview, Isaac revealed a bit about Bran's mission, leaving out the essentials. One of his statements was, Clearly it's more a matter of Bran knowing that he's not in the cave for a nice brief respite, from all the kind of horrible things happening to ra around him. He sees there's a job to do. He just can't sit and relax and enjoy the, the nostalgia trips, because the Three-Eyed Raven isn't showing him all this stuff because it's nice for him. He's showing it to Bran because it's important. It's shaping the way the story has to go. Moving on to the lands of YouTube, we have more videos to, to talk about this week. The following channels released a review slash discussion of episode 2, Home. Alchiftex, Elio and Linda, Emergency Awesome, Preston Jacobs, Red Team Review, Glasses of Kingsgrave, and History of Westeros, who released a show only one and another in relation to possible book material. Elio and Linda have released a discussion about the politics of Dorne, Another one about the Red God in relation with the others. Red Team Review released a Q&A follow-up to his episode 2 review. Emergency Awesome released a Q&A follow-up to his review, a video about the Jon Snow Warg theory, and one about the Tower of Joy theory. Preston Jacobs ha released his Q&A for the episode 2 review, and another entry into his Thousand World Book Club, Discussing Call Him Moses. Vassals of Kingsgrave have released a discussion video about King Aegon III Targaryen. That is the news for the week ending on May 8th. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned. Goodbye everyone. Have a fun week.